So this is the Deskview Marvel P5 and it could be the best 100 bucks you ever spend for your camera system. Welcome to Red35 and today we are yeah, having a little bit of a change of scenery. So we're not filming outside. Well, in fact, this is my house and so welcome. Uh, as you can see that we're still in a mess at the moment. We've got ladder boxes everywhere. Uh, yes, yeah, a little bit chaotic simply because we just moved in here not long ago. And uh, yeah, I'm still in the process of doing up my studio and hopefully in the very near future, you'll see my uh, 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 studio productions and then uh, so things will be a lot better, lighting, sound and everything. Uh, so stay tuned and bear with me. Uh, so it's going to be a lot longer process. Uh, it's actually taking a lot longer than I expected. Uh, but anyway, you know, like, you know how it goes when you are a dad having two kids and the family and everything like that, you know, so things usually progresses a little bit slower. But anyway, today we are going to look at something rather interesting for both photography and filmmaking. So this is the Marvel P5. Uh, it is a Chinese made, very, very cheap external monitor that can connect to your OMD cameras or in fact any digital camera which has an HDMI output. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Um, well, obviously you know that I film a lot these days so uh, having a bigger screen is always a bonus. This is why uh, I would recommend any serious uh, videographers or even YouTubers, uh, aspiring uh, content creator, uh, you know, self promoters, even self obsessor, you know, they would love to, you know, see them see himself or herself in a bigger screen, right? And, uh, but yeah, I'm just joking. So having a bigger screen does help you in terms of filming yourself because, you know, when you are uh, uh, putting, uh, you know, the camera on the tripod, for instance, you're stepping away for like four or five feet, you know, you, you really can't just rely on the tiny little screen right next to the camera. So having a slightly bigger one always helps regardless of the quality. Um, but then in photography, as you know that I am also a photographer, uh, so I take a lot of photos. Um, I do find in some instances, in some occasions, having a bigger screen, definitely, definitely better. Before I jump into the photography application of, you know, this Marvel P5, let's talk a little bit in general of this unit. Well, first of all, it's very affordable. You can pick one up on eBay or Amazon. I'm gonna put the link down in the description. Uh, uh, so this is affiliate link, so you can help us you know, grow in the future. So if you do decide to buy this unit, uh, it's really good. I think uh, uh, it's cheap. You know, I have been doing a lot of cheap product reviews lately just to help you guys out because I know getting started can be very expensive and very uh, exhausting, trying to source the gear that you need and you want. So uh, I'm just kind of trying to help everybody out at the moment because we have done a lot of reviews on expensive products out there and uh, not all the cheap products are good. So I'm trying to filter out some of the <laughs> good ones out. And uh, so this is one of them. And I think that uh, despite the very 1980s, horrible, cheaply plastic housing that it has in these things, it does have a good screen. It has a sharp uh, wide gamut color LCD screen, which is actually very good in terms of uh, color reproductions, very natural to the eyes. I don't have any scientific comparison, but judging by what I see in normally and comparing to what I see on the screen, they do compare well. So uh, it's not too bad. Uh, externally, uh, it has a 418 nit brightness. Uh, so it's not ultra bright in today's standard uh, and also the contrast ratio is only 1000 to 1, so it's not extremely high. So the blacks are not true black or deep black. Uh, so don't rely on that too much and uh, yeah, just be mindful of that. But other than that, it's not too bad. Uh, there are a few things that I don't like. It's the plastic construction. Now, I already mentioned it's a very cheap plastic construction, but it doesn't really inspire you any confidence whatsoever. It's, it's just almost like if you do drop it or accidentally bang it, it will crack the housing completely. Um, yeah, it's it just very, very uh, scratchy plastic. The buttons are springy, clicky. Uh, it's, it's functional, let's put it that way. But it doesn't have that damn uh, 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 feel to, like from a higher end product. It's not weather suit, of course, you know, so don't use it in the rain. Um, the dials, yeah, switches, it just in general, just not feeling very, very high quality. Uh, but it's functional, totally functional, don't get me wrong. One thing I do like though, is the battery, it does use the Sony F-Series batteries, which is very good and is actually 
uh, holds it very, very snugly, doesn't come out, doesn't have any wobble, which I usually hate in an external monitor. Uh, it does come with a whole load of stuff as well. It does come with the cable, come with the L bracket, have a cold shoe as well, so allowing you to mount an uh, external mic or LED lights, whatever you want on the side, which is actually good. Uh, so of course, you know, at the moment I'm facing forward, so you know this is good for when you're filming yourself, you can flip it around to face the other way when you are actually filming. Um, so yeah, in general, it's, it's, it's not bad. And uh, in terms of features, right, this is good. And uh, so it doesn't have an HDMI uh, output from the unit, so you cannot relay another signal out to another monitor, for instance. But it does have a 3.5 mil jack there for your headphone uh, audio monitoring. So if your camera doesn't have a uh, headphone jack, this is good because you can use this to monitor your audio if you wish. Uh, so that gives you a little bit of bonus there. And uh, so yeah, in general, I actually think this is not bad at all. Um, let's talk a little bit about the uh, screen now. And I already mentioned about the color reproductions, contrast ratios and so forth, but it is a sharp screen. So uh, I do like using it as a 1080 resolution. So it's not bad for this size and uh, it's not 4K, but it does take 4K input. So which is, yeah usable. Um, so if you are filming something, this screen is nice and sharp and especially in filming and uh, 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 checking exposures and, and critical focus, the peaking on this unit can be very, very usable. And the Zebra, of course, you know, to checking all the clippings uh, in the blacks and the whites. Um, everything's in here. So it's no thrill. It does offer you a lot of features that you would need for basic filmings and stuff. It doesn't have waveform whatsoever. It does allowing you to mo uh, like kind of mirror the monitor from your cameras, especially if your camera does support that feature. All the Olympus cameras does have two modes there when you're connecting an external monitor. Uh, one is called recording mode, one is called the uh, monitor mode. When you're having a recording mode, the screen would just blank, or when you say blank, you know, you just have the picture, but no icons, no text, nothing at all. So that will allow you to focus on compositions and looking at the mood of the pictures if you got uh, the correct color profile setting in there and mirror to there. And, uh, but if you're having in monitor mode, it basically just mirror everything that you normally see from a viewfinder or the back LCD screens. That will include all the uh, uh, external um, uh, uh, texts, you know, like all the setting icons and things like that, it will all mirror on the screen. So uh, it's just like a bigger screen basically. So it, yeah, depending which mode you prefer, it, it does have both, which is good. I think. Um, other than that, no, this is good. I, I do genuinely think this is a very capable product, um, certainly very useful and affordable. So hopefully I can help you out on this particular point. Anyway, let's get into photography. So using an external monitor uh, in photography is very, very strange at first because no one ever really used an external monitor for photography. You usually use an EVF or the back LCD screen and that's it, because monitors are usually really purely for filmmaking and videography. But I actually find it quite useful when you are photographing something very static, like landscape, macro photography, or uh, interior uh, photography, yeah, something that you don't need to move around that much and you just need to put it on a tripod or just for stay very, very still. And I do find having a bigger monitor help you not, not only just composition, but also critical focus. If you are uh, that type of person who uses a lot of manual focus to nail the exact position, uh, so landscape is very, very critical. I know a lot of photographers use manual focus for landscape photography and photo stacking. Same as macro photography, interior for instance as well. But having a monitor like this, because of the larger screen for peaking, it really, really helps. So uh, let's do a quick demo of what I can uh, achieve by taking some uh, close-up photos of the, uh, these flowers here. And uh, it's actually pretty easy to do with this, especially when you're enabling the peaking uh, uh, facility on this. Okay, so first of all, making sure the screen is actually facing you. So yeah, you are looking at it. Um, so it, it's very straightforward. You know, if you are, let's say, doing a close-up of flowers or bugs, for instance, and it's very, very straightforward. All you need to do is just turn on the peaking and just let it does its job. And then uh, I, I do find it very, very interesting just to see that peaking really punching straight into your eyes and, and just checking that focus there is just amazing. And it's so much, much easier compared to uh, uh, EVF and LCD screen focusing. Um, 
yeah, it, it just works. And uh, I, I love using a bigger screen. No matter how uh, high the resolutions in the EVF, uh, EVF you know, I have used uh, many other systems and have much higher uh, magnifications and also, uh, and also resolutions. But when it comes to it, I think nothing beats a much bigger external screen and, uh, and that's, that was a joy to use. But even though it's a little bit bigger to set up, but like I mentioned, uh, if you're photographing something that is not moving and quite static like macro and, and, and landscape, this is perfectly fine and uh, I actually find it quite a joy to use. So hope you guys enjoyed this quick um, review of the Deskview Marvel P5 external monitor unit and some demo of how I use this for photography, uh, even though I use it mainly for filming, uh, but it is a very useful tool. Um, what's my thought about it? You know, um, I wouldn't be standing here talking to you if I don't like this product, to be quite honest. And uh, I do think it's a very affordable, very useful product. And if you do need a bigger screen for whatever you do, whether it's gonna be filmmaking or photography, it's cheap, it's affordable, like I mentioned many, many, many times already. Um, there's one thing that I have to highlight to you guys, which I kind of forget to mention, is the menu system in these things. It's, there is no uh, graphical user interface. If you are born in the 90s, you have the kind of like the newer generations content creator, you're so used to touch screens and icon based menus and things like that. No, this thing doesn't offer you any of that. It's very 1980s Microsoft DOS style uh, text-based menu system. Quite a mouthful. It shows my age as well, which is not good. But anyway, so it's like that, you know, so there's no thrill. It goes to the point directly. Uh, there is no layers of menus and things like that. It's very, very straightforward. But you are, uh, if you are a new, newer, younger generation content creators, you may not be familiar with it and you might find it a little bit overwhelming at first, but once you get used to it, it's really direct, very easy to use. And, uh, and also, you know, having a text-based simple system like this, it also means one thing, reliability, because uh, a lot of the graphical user interface tends to fail and crash. Uh, so having a text-based system, it's just simple, it's very straightforward, uh, unlikely is going to crash at any time. Um, so I wouldn't worry about that too much and uh, you just have to get used to where everything is and you just have to use the dial at the top to press and turn to select things that you wish or turning things on and off, as simple as that. And also all the buttons can be customized and uh, to whatever you want to use. I mean, I set my, uh, my four buttons to peaking, zebras, magnifications and so forth. So just for me to quickly access to things I use the most. Um, so I guess it's still actually a very uh, commandable product. Looks at it. Commendable? Commendable. Yes. Very good. Anyway, so hope you guys enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done so and put on the bell notification so you stay tuned for our new stuff. Until next time though, I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.